So if you've watched this stream for a while, you'll know that there was one person I'm not, not a very big fan of that everybody else in kind of the liberal sphere seems to bend over backwards for, despite his voting record in Parliament. And this man is Rory Stewart, who is a member, of, who was a previous member of the Conservative Party, who was fine to vote with them when it was austerity and anti-trade union laws and cutting benefits for the disabled. He was fine to vote for, with them for everything, but then it came down to Brexit, and suddenly he had to put his cards on the table and they had his whip withdrawn uh, over the brexit deal that he was whipped to vote for it and he didn't vote for it and because he did that all of the liberals just forgot they completely forgot about all the austerity they forgot about all the human rights violations of the disabled that he waved through along with the conservative whips because he broke ranks on the the real issue as far as they're concerned which is the big b word because politics did indeed start in 2016 solly that is very true there's the first year that politics ever happened was 2016. But right, it appears that my misgivings for Rory Stewart are indeed misplaced. Apparently, I've, this is what my mum has told me because she listens to the bloody podcast, that he said that they got it wrong with austerity. So nice to find at least one conservative who has admitted that austerity was bad. Uh, and he's also said something very interesting this week. And the kind of centrist dad types who were loving him. They were in love with him over his breaking ranks on Brexit, despite not breaking ranks on all of the things that mattered a little bit more than that in the whole austerity mass murder years. Right, the 330,000, the David Clapsons of this world. They're now really angry with him. They've fallen out of love with Rory Stewart real hard because he said this. I want to move on from Jeremy Corbyn, but I mean, it's kind of striking that he's another 2019 casualty right? Incidentally, I think it's disgusting he was thrown out of the Labour Party, just as I also think it was pretty peculiar that Boris Johnson kicked out two chancellors, the Exchequer, six cabinet ministers, Winston Churchill's grandson, and the rest of us out of the Conservative Party. I mean, it's mad. Jeremy Corbyn, whatever you think of him, is a major figure who represents a very significant part of Labour history and heritage. He was the leader of the party. Why do you think Keir Starmer did it? I think he is running a very controlling business with about three or four people trying to micromanage the Labour Party. I think he lacks confidence. I mean, I, I, I believe in politics as being about embracing difference and compromise and persuasion and conversations amongst different people. I was proud to be in debates on Afghanistan with Jeremy Corbyn. I listened to him carefully. Paul Flynn I liked a lot. And I think that Parliament is better when it encompasses those people. Now, I don't think that's necessarily about the voting record, but I definitely think it's about voices and personalities. Incredible. He has now committed, oh, he's committed a, a cardinal sin. In centrist dad land, saying good words about jumbly crumbly concrete, the jam man himself, that is high treason in centrist dad world. And they've been sounding off on Twitter. Yeah, he's committed heresy, committed literal heresy by saying something incredibly bland as maybe we shouldn't have ideological purges within parties in government. An incredibly bland statement. Didn't endorse any of his policies, didn't endorse any of the things that he said, just said maybe it's bad when you do internal party purges and made a very salient criticism of Keir Starmer being so unconfident that he wants to have a very tiny little central committee of people who then have de facto control of the party to be able to get, get rid of basically everything uh, and anybody that they dislike. M very mild statement. This isn't the second coming of Rory Stewart the Socialist. It's just maybe there shouldn't be internal party Stalinist purges coming from people who are more authoritarian than anybody should be comfortable with. This is in no way a pro-Corbyn statement. This is just somebody has like a basic amount of principles, right? The centrists have lost their tiny, tiny little minds. There were extremely clear and good reasons for withdrawing the whip from Jeremy Corbyn, and it's grossly offensive that Rory Stewart had waded into that debate while demonstrating absolutely no knowledge of the circumstances. And then here is the reason, apparently, which is Corbyn minimised anti-Semitism in his response to the historic EHRC report on anti-Semitism. Okay, so let's debunk this first claim. Let's debunk this very first claim. Article 10 of the ECHR says that in the words of the EHRC report itself, Article 10 will protect Labour Party members who, for example, make legitimate criticisms of the Israeli government or express their opinions on internal party mat matters, such as the scale of anti-Semitism within the party based upon their own experience and within the law. It does not protect criticism of Israel that is anti-Semitic. 
seems pretty clear cut that Jeremy Corbyn could say, I accept the findings of the report, but I would also like to point out that the scale to which Labour is being sh uh, being treated as, with regards to anti-Semitism, anti over-exaggerated for internal and factional and political party reasons. It'd be, it'd be crazy, right? It'd be crazy if that's literally what he said, which is indeed exactly what he said. He did say they accepted the EHRC report in full and that he was happy to implement their recommendations, which he did, but he did question the people, the media and other politicians reporting of the perceived anti-Semitism scale within the party, right? There are plenty of people who to this day will try and tell you that Corbyn's Labour was institutionally anti-Semitic and it says nowhere, it is nowhere in any of the EHRC's, EHRC report that there is institutional anti-Semitism. So not only does it not say that, that, it also says specifically, it gives specific protections for Co Jeremy Corbyn to say that there can be comments on the scale of the, of the level of anti-Semitism within the party. They haven't even read the report that they're citing specifically as this damning indictment of Jeremy Corbyn. This is how ridiculous these people are. And then he, he even misdirects even further in this next tweet here, where he says, Jeremy Corbyn's action, he quotes Starmer saying that Jeremy Corbyn's actions in response to the report undermine and set back our work in restoring trust and confidence in the Labour Party's ability to tackle anti-Semitism. In those circumstances, I have taken the decision not to restore the whip to Jeremy Corbyn in. Okay, so the original comment by Rory Stewart was about the initial suspension of the whip. The initial suspension of the whip is what's being criticised by Rory Stewart in this clip here. Now, James Ball, in this second comment here, is responding to Keir Starmer talking about not restoring the whip. Because if you'll remember, right, if you'll remember very specifically, when Jeremy Corbyn was, had his whip suspended from the party, right, was made to independent rather than a Labour MP, in the NEC motion that was passed, it at no point mentioned anti-Semitism. At no point. The suspension, as far as the NEC was concerned, was that he was an electoral liability for the party, having led them to a crushing defeat or whatever they claimed it was. They felt like they couldn't win the election if he was standing as a Labour Party candidate. That was the original reason given in the NEC motion. And you know that it was why, right? One can only assume, given the information that we have, the reason why that was the why the NEC had that motion specifically was because they know they couldn't criticize him over his do it with his response to the EHRC report, because it says here in plain detail he is protected to speak on matters such as the scale of anti-Semitism within the party, which was the statement that he made. These people do not even read the things that they're quoting here. Literally, him here saying, I personally think it was mad and disgusting to react to the publication of the EHRC's report by denying anti-Semitism, which he never did. He never denied anti-Semitism. He was only quite criticising the scale, which again is protected by Article 10. These people just lie. They just openly lie and expect you not to be able to find the receipts for it. Here's this initial, here, literally, in the statement is in front of you. Determines to eliminate all forms of racism and root out the cancer of anti-Semitism. Campaigned in support of Jewish people and communities. Anyone claiming there is no anti-Semitism in the party is wrong. Of course there is. That's literally him saying that there is in the party. That's the opposite of denying anti-Semitism. And then here he says, the scale of the problem was dramatically overstated for political reasons by opponents inside and outside the party, as well as much of the media, which is protected by Article 10. It's completely unambiguous. It's completely unambiguous from all the things I've presented here. But these people are just, they, they, just, they just lie. They lie over and over and over again. They misdirect. They create false information. They will show you statements to your face and try and claim that it says something that it doesn't say, or the opposite of what it says. Here is someone retweeting Ash Sarkar's clip of Rory Stewart by saying, well, of course Ash Sarkar thinks a Tory knows how to run the Labour Party better than a Labour Party does. Because, of course, again, these people only think in team sports. It's red team or blue team, right? That's all that matters. Principles don't count for anything. It doesn't matter whether somebody's criticising it on for good reasons or for bad reasons. If they're on the wrong team, then you're not allowed to do it. So Ash Sarkar you know, dut dutifully retweets him by saying, this is not a normal way to respond to seeing an interview clip where someone says something you disagree with. And then of course this guy <laughs> responds by saying, don't start a pile on by, by quote tweeting, when he also initially quote tweeted her as well, which I find hilariously, hilariously hypocritical. Turns out this guy stood as the pro-EU candidate against Labour in Kensington in 2017. This guy stood against Labour Party in 2017. Incredible. Like the absolute brass neck of the to come out here and talk about Labour Party internal politics, having stood against them, not, you know, 
five years ago. Incredible, incredible scenes, incredible scenes. To pull out the literal worst journalist in the United Kingdom, friend of the show, Sonia Soda, this is what she's been saying. He's running a very controlling business, Stuart said when Starmer asked about why, when Stuart said when asked about why Starmer expelled Corbyn. Seriously, what does it say of your opinion of the EHRC and its findings on anti-Semitism that doesn't even merit to mention in the same sentence? Because there was nothing in the NEC motion that mentioned anti-Semitism during the expulsion. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And again, they expect us not to read this stuff. Smear machinist says Novara star for Ari Corbyn anti-Semitism in the EHRC. I don't know how else you can describe these people other than smear machinists when they will just invent reasons that have never actually officially been made as to why things like the expulsion happen. They've not even bothered reading the NEC motion. Shami Chakrabarti did identify anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, but it was less than 1%. Yes, exactly. 100%. There is anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. Nobody denies this. Not even the jam man himself will deny that there is anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. In fact, there is proof of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party from the EHRC report, which findings were accepted by Jeremy Corbyn. Like Ken Livingston and Pat Bromley, I don't think any one of us can disagree that these two are two legitimate claims of anti-Semitism. But two claims of anti-Semitism does not institutional anti-Semitism make, nor does it mean that the instances of, of such are higher than any other party, when the data that we have shows that, in fact, the only real major party that showed less instances, fewer instances of, of anti-Semitism in the UK was the Liberal Democrats. The Conservative Party, as far as anti-Semitic attitude is concerned, is more anti-Semitic than the Labour Party, given the study in 2017, when Jeremy Corbyn was in charge of the party. They have no evidence for any of this, right? They have the EHRC report, and they have, like, the Panorama documentary. That's it. That's their evidence. Evidence which, if you've watched things like the Labour Files, we know there are some serious holes in, right? Like, there's no proof. No one's pr produced any proof that Rika Bird asked Ben Westerman if he came from Israel. Only Ben Westerman's word we're going with when we have a recording that doesn't even include it, which is what branch are you from, which he didn't include in his in his statement about Rika Bird. So, you know, take from that what you will. Not to, I'm not going to accuse anybody of lying because we don't have all of the evidence, but it's only his word against theirs. His words against a, a, an actual recording, no less. Incredible, incredible, incredible scenes from these people. But it just shows, right, how paper thin how paper thin the principles of liberals and centrists are that their absolute blind seething hatred of the jam man gets them to the point where they're like well oh, actually no i've massively fallen out of love with rory stewart i literally saw someone on twitter saying i hope that alistair campbell takes rory stewart to task on it on their next podcast i'm like yeah of course you know on whose side i'm gonna take over both rory stewart and jeremy corbyn the man of the dodgy dossier himself and if that is if anything, an excellent point to end this segment on. Because I you know, I don't think anything really and truly exposes people as much as that. Given Alistair Campbell's connections to the Blair administration and the consequences of the foreign policy these people engaged in, and that they're happy to side with him over the person who opposed it. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. It does help out the channel and the algorithm. And if you click the bell notification icon, it will let you know when I go live and when I upload videos. If you'd like to follow me on social media, my handle is at NoJusticeMTG, and that is Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube. If you want to support my channel in a more financial manner, you can do so by becoming a member for just 99p, by super chatting, or by supporting me on Patreon, with the link is in the description of this video. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next segment.